everybody, I am back. This episode is one I have wanted to make for a very... Why am I talking like this? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Inside Fighting, where we talk deeply about different martial arts. So on this episode of Inside Fighting, I am going to talk about a martial art that I am deeply in love with. As everyone knows, I love Kyokushin, but there's an offshoot of Kyokushin that I believe is an actual evolution of the system. There's some amazing, amazing improvements that the style has over Kyokushin, which in my opinion, in my humble, humble opinion, make it even better as an option than perhaps things like Muay Thai, which I am very much in love with also as a system. And I'll explain why. This style of martial arts gives you some things that other striking systems, outside of very, 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 very few, like Sanda or Combat Sambo, will give you. And the system I'm talking about is Ashihara Karate. So stay tuned, because we're going to deep dive into what makes Ashihara so special. Pow, pow, inside, inside fighting, yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow, ooh, ah. All right, everyone, Ashihara. So first of all, Ashihara is a system founded by Hideyuki Ashihara, who trained directly with uh, Masoyama in Kyokushin. And this is, in my opinion, a very, very, very functional evolution of the system. It gives you some things that other styles just won't give you. Like I said, outside of very few systems, this is a very unique system. Uh, and in fact, some of the movement in it, if you want to get a traditional style that gives you the benefits of all of modern day fighting, then this is probably the one for you. It's just hard to find. Ashihara's Enshin, Ashihara. When I say this, I think the category of Ashihara has to include Enshin. And then I'll probably down the road do another video on uh, on Kudo or Daido Juko because there's another evolution there as well. But Ashihara itself is kind of a progression of Kyokushin over the years. I have some really, really cool videos. And when I say progression of, uh, of Kyokushin, what I mean is that I feel personally, deep in my soul, that it looks at the weaknesses of Kyokushin. And some of these weaknesses are not immediately obvious. But they're, they're, they're very evident when you train Kyokushin and then when you go out and train other systems. Uh, and it kind of addresses them in a way that doesn't take away what made Kyokushin special, which is the bare-knuckle fighting with the no-head punches and just insane tough conditioning. It just adds elements above it. Three key areas of elements, which I'll jump into. So first, I just want to show some video of Hideyuki Ashihara. I think it's important that we show footage of the person who founded the system. He was expelled from Kyokushin in 1978, I believe. I'm not going to jump into politics. That's not the point of this channel. I don't really know the story. I don't care to know the story. What I do know is he made a fantastic system. Uh, and it's an offshoot system, again, of Kyokushin, which is another fantastic system. So let's just look right here. This is him. And he's in a frozen pose for some reason, getting ready to show some techniques. So if you look right here, they're just showing some basic techniques. And you'd find this in other karate systems. You'd even find this in Kyokushin. But what you're already going to notice right off the bat, which you won't see in Kyokushin, is that they're using something called Taisabaki, which is circular movement or body management, essentially placing your body in a way that gives you the advantage and takes away the disadvantage from your opponent, puts them at a disadvantage. This is something, in my opinion, that is number one. So let's just pause right here, or I'll make myself a little bitter. bitter? I'll make myself a little bigger, and uh, we'll keep this running in the background, because why not? So this is the first thing that Ashihara addresses. Ashihara addresses footwork. Kyokushin, as much as people want to pretend it addresses footwork, does not. Kyokushin praises mental toughness and forward pressure. Push through, push through, push through. Now, this is great. It's actually something that I love in Kyokushin. It's something that has bled beautifully into other styles like Dutch kickboxing, that forward, aggressive style of fighting. But having functional awareness of footwork, having good functional footwork can go a very long way when you're fighting someone who's bigger than you, someone who's faster than you, someone who is stronger than you. These are just the realities. It is a tool that is absolutely necessary. Another thing that you'll find in Kyokushin is what I call lean-in fighting. You see guys who kind of just put all their weight into the person. It's like they're creating a, a pyramid into each other. 
And they're just kind of falling forward into each other, throwing full force punches into the body. Why? Because no one's going to move out of the way. There is no threat of falling over or being taken down in Kyokushin, not at least as the same way as Ashihara. And so that will bring us into the next point. So Tai Sabaki, and I have a video here. Let me just put this on because this is very important. But if you look at the, these clips running in the background, what I love is you see right away they're grabbing, they're circling out, and they're right away getting control of posture. Again, something that Kyokushin doesn't address. Now, the biggest weakness in Kyokushin against Muay Thai specifically is not the face punches. Because a lot of Thai boxers, believe it or not, traditional Thai boxers, don't rely on punching to the head so much. What they rely on is clinch. They rely on elbows, knees, kicks, and clinch. Traditional old-school Thai boxing punched very little, but it was amazing in the clinch. Now, what Ashihara gives you, because of all the gripping, the grabbing, the bare-knuckle fighting, you still get a sense of control with your hands. It gives you an incredible ability to fight within the clinch. In other words, you could be a fighter who fights tight up here, who fights very strong up top, like I've talked about in the past, where you cover up your head, you become a bully fighter, and you just stay tight and tuck. It still gives you that ability, but what it teaches you is now when the guy comes close, you can get a grip of them, and you can off-balance them and use your footwork to circle out and not take tremendous forward, uh, aggressive punches to the head. The reason that forward fighting style works in Kyokushin is because of the rule set. There's nothing wrong with that. But it places you in harm's way when you fight other systems. And again, I know I seem like I'm criticizing Kyokushin. I actually love Kyokushin. I have another video on Kyokushin on the channel. I praise it tremendously. I think it gives you a specific tool set, which no other system will give you as well for fighting, any kind of fighting, combat sports, street fighting. It gives you a certain tool set, which is very, very unique. That will be a great subset for any other system you train for those things, whether it's combat sports or for fighting. It gives you incredible conditioning, mental toughness, physical toughness, power. But what it lacks, again, is teaching you really. Uh, and I know a lot of Kyokushin guys are going to be like, well, we deal with head punches. You don't. Not in the way that a lot of other systems do. And so it's gonna. this will give you an option where you don't lose that Kyokushin magic, which is the bare knuckle fighting, hitting to the body, no brain damage in your training. But you're learning to offset people. I would put my money on a judo guy in a street fight over a lot of strikers because a lot of fights get close and involve gripping. And that's the one area that a lot of striking is lacking in, how to grip. Even Muay Thai, as good as it is in the clinch, it's fantastic. It's not really teaching you how to throw in a super functional way. There's some trips. There are some, some takedowns in Muay Thai. But it's not the same as even what you'll find in Ashihara. And again, if you're dealing with tremendous forward pressure, like you do in Kyokushin, but you're never learning or really dealing with tremendous aggressive punches to the head, you will be ill-equipped for a street fighting situation. Ashihara, through Tai Sabaki, which we'll see right here, is teaching you how to deal with forward pressure, regardless of the kind of forward pressure, whether it's a grab, whether it's a punch, whether it's an aggressive forward movement takedown, through footwork. So you will not become a fighter who has bad habits and leans forward into the pressure. You will become a fighter who allows the pressure to circle and go away from you. And I think that's, again, a way to keep the benefits of Kyokushin, which is bare knuckle, punches to the body, hard conditioning, very, very tough style, but also teach you an effective way to deal with head punches, even if you're not training them all the time, which, by the way, Kyokushin guys definitely, uh, Ashihara guys definitely deal with head punches more. It's just something I've noticed, and they're always using that Tai Sabaki to circle to the back. I've watched a tremendous amount of videos here, and a lot of them do bring head punches into play. Um, so if you look, I love something that happens here. This guy does an amazing clip. They also deal with multiple people, but look at how he's gripping the arm, covering up the head, and he's using that arm to control the guy. This is a very, very good, effective way to control someone in a fight. Anytime he feels something coming at him, the guy can't punch here. Let me pause this. The guy cannot punch with his right arm and he cannot kick you with his right leg because he's circling outside. In Filipino martial arts, we call this fighting half the man. Why are we fighting half the man? Because we're taking two limbs out of play. Your two, your two weapons out of play. We're taking your ar one arm out of play and one leg out of play. And we're only letting you hit us with this arm or this leg because we're over here. We're hiding. You have to turn to hit me with the other one. So we're fighting half the man. 
he's doing that here. He's controlling the hand that's closest to him, which is incredibly effective through a grip. He's also controlling the guy's balance and posture through that. And he's using circular footwork so that whenever anything comes in harm's way, he's right away, bam, circling out and able to deal with it. And let's just see this again right here. If you look right here, as the punch comes, he circles out. It doesn't matter if it's a punch or a kick, he circles out. And he's controlling the guy through the grip. That's just something that you won't get in Kyokushin training. Because the rule set for the competitions don't allow that. They don't allow gripping the gi like that. That is an evolution. It's such a basic thing. So this is number two. First, we have Taisabaki, which is good footwork, circular movement, not standing in front of the person. And the second benefit or second evolution, I said there's three, is what I would call gripping and takedowns and clinch work. And uh, again, their clinch work is completely different than Muay Thai. Their clinch work is one that is closer to something you would find in combat sambo because they're using the gi and they're doing more throws that are more traditional. They're off balancing and they're really, their goal is to take you down and break posture, knee you and then throw you into the ground. And you'll see that happen over and over and over. And I think it's, again, it translates better to defending your head because someone cannot punch you in the head when they are off balance and when you're circling around them and when you're going to their back, they just cannot hit you in the head. So you don't need to worry about the head punch as much, which is again, the primary thing that you would have to worry about in a street fight. This is a realistic street fight kind of exchange here that they're doing. He's gripping the arm, he's circling out, he's grabbing the guy's head, breaking his posture and taking him down. It's very basic. But again, look, see, clinch work, take down. Interestingly enough, I see this in Shotokan training, and I never understood why in Kyokushin they don't implement it into the rule set. And yet Ashihara took it and put it in. I mean, Shotokan, a lot of what I love, especially about old school Shotokan, is that the exchanges that you saw always ended up with the intention to take the guy down at the end. It was a differentiating factor of other striking styles, again, like kickboxing, Muay Thai, etc. And yet, for some reason, that was lost in Kyokushin. And see, again, here, they're dealing with head punches. They're dealing with parrying. They're dealing with... They... So this is a traditional martial art that is modernized. It takes all the benefits of Kyokushin and it modernizes them. Now, that might be a negative. Remember, I said Ashihara might not be for everyone. And one more difference I have to mention, by the way, I'm sorry that I'm going on a rant here, is they like elbows a lot more. Uh, if you notice, they circle to the back, they throw you all the time, and when they're in close, they use elbows. See, so just elbowed the guy in the back of the neck. I think their movement is stunning. And, I mean, that's that's interesting to see. They actually went down and did a rear naked choke. Um, it just looks to me like they're more open to kind of modernizing their system. Now, another thing here I'm going to show is that they have a better understanding of range. You see, this is a short distance video. That's what it, it literally starts off by saying that. A lot of the, the elements of Ashihara take into account what range you're at. Why? Again, because the rule set allows gripping, allows throwing, and is heavily focused on knees and elbows when you're in close. That gives you inherently a better understanding of range. You now know that when you're at medium range, you're going to fight a certain way. And when you're at close range, you're going to fight a certain way. When you're at long range, you're probably going to rely on your kicks. And again, for self-defense, I think an understanding of range is incredibly important. And the rule set in Kyokushin doesn't necessarily give you that. Because Kyokushin, because of the lack of head punches, the lack of, uh, uh, the lack of grabbing, the lack of takedowns, incentivizes you to get close, to get very, very close face-to-face but still just lace into each other with these body punches. And then you always see it. You always see people get so comfortable, so close to each other in Kyokushin. They're like face-to-face. -face. Their, their punches are leaning. Like, let me turn my body here sideways. But the punch is a leaning punch because you're using in Kyokushin. You're kind of to leverage the punch more, to use your mass as opposed to structure. Now, Ashihara guys can't do that because as they, if they were to do that, they would just get taken down. So they have to keep, again, look at me from the side, they have to keep a proper structure. They can't do this. This will get your head put into the ground and you're going to get need. The second I break any posture, I'm now weak to put my head in the ground. They need to be strong up here. You see a lot of Thai guys are very strong up top. They have very good structure. 
because if you fight in the clinch, you learn structure. And again, that's something that is heavily lacking in the Kyokushin rule set. And it allows you to not have good posture when you fight. And what happens is guys get close. They lean into each other. Their hands come down. They're like this. And then bam, a head kick comes and knocks you out. And it happens time and time and time again in Kyokushin tournaments because the rule set incentivizes it. And so these small adjustments that might not seem like a big deal, I'm saying footwork and grabbing, they might not seem like a huge deal to a lot of people or a massive deal when it comes to how effective your system actually is in a street fight or how effective it translates to other combat sports. I have a lot to show today. I apologize for this. I'm just very much into this system. Let me show some sparring footage here. And let's just go over some of this. So see their structure is better than even though they're still doing the punches to their body because of this, because of the grabbing, their structure is better. Man, that was a beautiful exchange into a takedown. I'm sorry, if I could do that to you in a street fight, if I could put you in the ground like that, that's it. I mean, that's the, you know, again, all the benefits of Kyokushin. You still have these crazy kicks. You still have this exciting stuff. These guys are younger. You can still see here a little bit of the lean. See, he was leaning, and what did it result in? In a takedown. That's an, a perfect example of why it doesn't work in Ashihara the same way as Kyokushin. Look at his body mechanics here. He's off balance. He's driving into the guy too much, and he gets taken down. His kick got caught and got taken down. Now, in Kyokushin, you can still catch people's kicks. See, the big lean, big lean. Not leaning. So it's it's really interesting to see the lean that I I hate in Kyokushin still exists. Look at the angle of this guy's body. He's like on a forward tilt. See that? He's not structured. And I never understood why that is such a thing. They're both have like, if you looked at them, they're forming a triangle. If you, I, I don't know how to draw this here, but from his feet to his head, to his head, to his feet would form a triangle, which is very, very good for taking someone down. It's it, it incentive. That guy got knocked out, which is exactly, again, what I said happens because of that lean. They open up their head and they get, they get kicked in the head and that's the end of the fight. Man, that was a beautiful knee attempt. Look at that. See? Bam. What a beautiful takedown. Gorgeous. I mean, that just changes everything. So here we're going to look at just one more sparring sparring session over here. This guy's fantastic. Can't remember what his name is. But he's he's excellent. It's an Ashihara fighter. You see how the gripping kind of changes things for them a little bit? A lot of these guys, I think, came from Kyokushin backgrounds because you could tell they still grip a little bit man beautiful throw beautiful throw and again that's a reaction to too much forward pressure ashihara gives you that amazing ability to look at that look how beautiful that was not many systems will give you that as a as a tool set to be able to do that in a, in a live situation circles him out just was sensitive to the body pressure Ooh, gorgeous again. You see, again, the clinch. You're allowed to grab the neck. See how they're fighting with their hands up? Look how they're gripping each other. It's way more... Man, that's like a, that's like a realistic street exchange. I'm putting it back. I, I like this exchange, so I keep replaying it. That's exactly what you want to see in your martial art, in my opinion. Look at that. Right away. Grabbing, clinch to the head. He ch transitions. Perfect knee to the head. Exactly what you want to see. Now, the last thing I said, there are three things, right? So here we go. There's there's three three benefits here that I told you that are different. Now, this last one I can't say is a benefit. This last one is just a matter of taste. And it has to do with kata. So Hideyuki Ashihara completely changed. He dropped all the traditional katas. And his katas are what you would consider kind of functional uh, shadow boxing style katas. They look like if you were shadow boxing, but with structure, like you were going to do this, you knew what movements you were going to do and you're practicing them that way, pattern based. But they're not relying on traditional old school karate blocks you don't use. They're relying on parrying, on slipping out, footwork. So let's just look at a, a little kata here and we'll go over why this is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you see he's relying on, on parrying, parrying the kick. Good footwork, but these 
Cut this. By the way, they still look traditional. This doesn't look like that was a throw. This doesn't look like what you would see, again, that was a clinch kind of offset the guy's balance, take him down. So these katas, let's just play it one more time. They don't look like you're a messy kind of dude out there just doing random stuff. They look very structured, but they look modernized to be able to adapt your system. Those are still karate kicks. The footwork is still very, very exact and precise. That was a nice throw into a knee. There he's doing all the movements we saw. So me personally, do what do I think about this? I think there's... That's it. Those are the videos I wanted to show you today. So let me just talk about what I think about kata. I'm a little bit torn on it. I think there's some, I love martial arts that give me a belt, that give me tradition. It's the art aspect of martial arts. I understand there's a martial aspect. I also understand there's an art aspect. If I want to go fight, I'll go to an MMA gym. But if I want to learn something that I'm going to do for the next, hopefully, 40 years of my life, I want to have some tradition in it. I like structure. And I like belts. I like having a goal to improve upon. And I like kata in the sense that it gives me a set series of movements to practice very functionally. And I do think there's benefits to your body. I do think there's benefits to your muscles. There's benefits to your tendons. There's benefits to your focus. It's meditative. It's good for your breathing. But do I think it translates to fighting directly? No. I think this might give you the benefits of both. I think this still gives you the benefits of the breathing, the meditative aspect, the control aspect. But again, it modernizes it to a time where we now realize we parry more, we do elbows more, we're, we're doing takedowns in our katas. I hear all too often that people say, oh, people just don't understand kata, that they don't know how to apply it, that there's actually all this grappling techniques in kata, that there's all this offsetting, off-balancing techniques in kata. But the truth is, if it's so hidden in there and it's so complex that 95% of people who are training it don't understand it and don't know it, then that implies there's a problem. And if I can look at what you're doing and immediately understand it, that's probably a more functional way to train. What makes boxing so effective is that I look at it and I know what it is. It's simple. It uses the same basic tools, but it takes them to the best, best place that it can. You know what, what's a perfect example of this? You look at Strickland versus Adesanya. Adesanya came into that fight with 500 different techniques. And Strickland came into that with four techniques. A front kick, a jab, a cross, a hook, and incredible defense and setups. So what he did is he took the basics and he took them to the extreme they could be at. He put all his skill points there. And Adesanya spread his skill points out over a million different techniques. It's like what Bruce Lee said, I fear the man I'm probably destroying this quote, but it's about, I fear the man who's practiced the same kick 10,000 times versus the guy who's practiced 10,000 kicks one time. That mentality, correct me on the quote. I know I'm going to get bashed for it, but it's the mentality that be perfect at the thing you're doing. So if I'm practicing an outside block, you know what I mean? Or an inside block or a high block all day, every day, if I'm training when I'm doing my kata to chamber my arm here, and yes, I know there's benefits for generating power or chambering by my hip. But then when I go fight, I put my hands here. My kata should have always had my hands here. If I'm going to block by parrying, my kata should have always been a parry. If I'm going to check, I'm going to do a high elbow. And my kata should have always been that. If I do double leg takedowns, my kata should include a double leg takedown. Jesse Amcamp made a video about creating his own kata. And he said that that's something that he believes people can do. I think that's a very smart way to look at it. And I think that's kind of what we see with Ashihara. This video has gone on a very long time. Uh, again, I love Kyokushin. I also love the idea of systems evolving. Ashihara to me is Kyokushin. It's Kyokushin with those three important evolutions. Again, Taisabaki. And if you train Kyokushin, this just added in. You don't, again, you don't need to go train Ashihara. It's very easy to add in circular footwork into your training and start looking at like, okay, so we're facing off. I find myself getting stuck in this kind of game where I'm just being a rhino. Circle out one time, throw a roundhouse kick. And then I think if you can get your teacher to allow some clinch work and grabbing every once in a while, it's so important. So important. And the kata, again, I don't see it as a negative to practice traditional kata. I think it's beautiful. I think it's, again, a traditional aspect of fighting. And I think it helps you in all those aspects I said. Would I train Ashihara? I always end the videos on the positives and the negatives. 
I don't have any negatives for Ashihara. I understand it doesn't have head punching. You can call that a negative. I call it a, a positive. That's the truth. I don't want brain damage anymore because what Ashihara gives me is the ability to kind of implement judo into my Kyokushin. And the way I loved to train Kyokushin in the short amount of time I've, I've done it is by allowing clinch and takedowns. I think it evolves the system tremendously. So I don't see any negatives. It gives you the benefits of the amazing conditioning, beautiful kicks, circular footwork, takedowns. I think... Uh, from what I saw, they, they have an awareness of self-defense training versus uh, versus combat sports. They understand the difference and they train for both. Beautiful system. Again, this kind of includes Enshin too. Enshin, I think, is a wonderful system. Uh, and I love it. I wish I wish there was an Ashihara school near me. Uh, Portugal is sorely lacking in diversity of martial arts, at least in the north here in Porto. So that's, that's a shame. Um, there's one Kyokushin school. Uh, the teacher seemed really nice. I went and I met him, but the, the timing conflicts with my jujitsu. Um, and that's it. There's no other Kyokushin schools. I might go try and find a Goju school. Uh, but that's what it is. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Because if you don't, I will find you. And I won't do anything but uh, be upset. So appreciate it. Thanks for watching. By the way, leave recommendations for videos you want to see below. I will make them if I like them. Thanks.